Kevin, how has it been just with this one day stopover with the unpacked to pack? How would you just describe how unusual it really is kind of in a stretch of the season like this? Yeah, it is unusual uh, to break up a road trip like this, but I think uh, we got with our players early on in the season and they preferred to do it like this. So we're going we gonna to obey their wishes on this one. Uh, um, and uh, it was just probably good for them to get home and spend some time with their families or spend some time with their pets, whatever they do on the off, just to get away from basketball a little bit and, and enjoy that um, back home in Brooklyn. How neat it was this pra how neat it was just this practice and just how good was it to kind of get here to not get a pra just a practice time in but also some time to see Cam Johnson. Yeah, it was great to see Cam here. I miss him a lot. Um, he had a good workout with Capes um, the day before and then he had a good workout today. Um, and then we get with our, our medical staff and see if his availability is right for tomorrow. So is he going to make the trip or will still be, be determined? He'll make the trip. Yeah, but it's still determined if he'll play or not. Did you say earlier that it was a player's decision to come back to Brooklyn? That's what I heard. <laughs> I wasn't in those meetings. I wasn't privy to those meetings, but that's what I heard. But it could not be. It could be false, too. So don't write that. <laughs> Speaking of Cam, how do you evaluate his season up to this point? Because he's had all these, not minor injuries, but injuries that have kept him out for bits and pieces of the season. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate, but I think he's handling it very, very well. And, you know, I know he wants to be out on the court and help us win and help our team keep building this culture that we're starting to establish. And um, I think he wants to be out there. So um, just him understanding the injuries are part of it and how he bounces back, how he responds is, is about being a pro. And I think he's doing that um, to his best of his abilities, following his um, regimen, his rehab regimen. And I think he's ready to go. Hopefully he'll be able to play. What many we got? 17? 17 left. Hopefully he can play all 17 <laughs> and more and more to, more after that. So when you look back from Cleveland, obviously you mentioned the effort was there, the the um, attention to detail was there. How does that now carry over to these next games, especially Orlando, considering that was another kind of turning point for you guys, where they kind of, as Nick said, kind of punked you guys. I guess that's what he said, not mine. Did I say that? Nick said those words. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, but they did punch us, um, and we didn't we didn't counter punch that game. But um, I think our guys are resilient. Um, they'll bounce back. They did bounce back, but now we have to be more consistent with our effort, and that can't be wavering from game to game. I'm not talking about wins and losses. I'm talking about the process of it, um, and I thought our process was right. Even in Cleveland, when they made some shots, our rotations was right. We didn't hang our head when they did make shots, and that's, that's what I want them to do is fall in love with the process of getting better each and every day, not worrying about a playoff spot or nothing like that. We're worrying about getting better every day, and I thought they did that in Cleveland. Now the big challenge is carrying it over, and I think we'll have the mindset of carrying it over. We'll see, um, but I really believe in this group that they'll have that mindset of getting better each and every day, and we'll bring that on, on a road trip. And then with Nick, too, obviously, offensively, he's been kind of on a roll. I think the last four games he's had a double-double, but it seems like he's getting more and more comfortable on the offensive end. What are you seeing from him that's able to unlock that a little bit more these last few games? I love that word. You know, that's one of my favorite words, unlock. Um, I want us to be unlocked on the offensive end, unlocked on the defensive end. I mean, we was in film today, and he's just speaking up like the leader he's supposed to be, um, telling the guys what he wants on defense and challenging the guys, even in our film session. So I just see him growing, um, and this is only the tip of the iceberg of his leadership and what he can be as a man, first and foremost, and as a basketball player. Do you see anything different with him offensively? Is he demanding the ball more, just being in position? He said he's ducking in, two feet in the paint. I said he got two feet in the paint and he established paint, a paint um, um Paint, um, a place in the paint, and he's and he's right there. You got to throw it to him, and he has that position, and we getting it to him. But I do like Dennis Schroeder, like court mapping, like understanding the court mapping, knowing where players are, using it as like chess pieces and manipulating the defense. Um, he had a one play where he rescreened and made Cam be in a single tag. Cam was hot, so they wasn't gonna come off the single tag. Got pick and roll, got got um, Nick to the rim. So just him being able to court map is really good and kind of understanding pattern recognition as well. And we talked about that today, kind of knowing what Cleveland's going to do, pattern on defense, and having that recognition. I think our guys are starting to get that so we can play more unlike basketball. Don't steal my word. <laughs> what, are you, uh, what are you seeing from uh, Dennis you know, Schroeder? It's, I think it's 14 games now he's been here. What have you seen from him just in terms of running the offense as that kind of steadying presence at point guard and also just a voice on the team? Yeah, I've seen his leadership. Um, first and foremost, he challenged 
you know, all of us uh, to be better. We challenge him. Um, I just love his intensity on the defensive end. He's picking up 94 feet. I call it being in the frame, and it's contagious through our group. Um, when he picks up like that and keeps his man in front, it's just great for us. It gives us a presence out there, and teams feel us. And um, I need him to continue to do that. And like we just was talking about his court mapping, how he's manipulating the defense is great. Um, and being an extension of me on the court, because I can't play. And him understanding what I want and him out there transferring is great for our offense and defense. Speaking of Clax uh, getting in the paint, those post-entry passes, how have you as a guard kind of seen the progression of guard skills kind of drop the art, I guess, of post-entry passing? Because there have been a few plays where he hasn't gotten the ball, and you know it's a much talked about skill over the last 20 years that guards don't practice that as mm -hmm. much. Have you seen that over your career? Um, yeah, to a certain extent, um, it's became you know more three pointers and and bigs not down there demanding the ball. They're picking and popping now. So you know, it's, it's that art is not as much as when we was playing when we had big centers and it was prominent that we had centers down there. But the game is is changing, and I just want Nick to be down there. And I sure I have Nick coming off pick and rolls. And one of our first plays was Nick coming off a of pick and roll. So you know, I want him to be unlocked. I don't want him to be in a box offensively. Um, and I want him to do all kind of things on the court because he's doing everything on the defensive end for us, blocking shots, rebounding. So we need to throw him the ball, but he has to demand the ball as well. So, you know, I'm telling our, our, our guards, we got to reward the big fella because he's doing a lot of cleanup for us on the defensive end. So when he do have two feet in the paint and he's established that, he should be getting the ball. And have you been pleased with his overall effort in trying to integrate himself into the offense since oh, you know, yeah. he took over, you've been mentioning that. Yeah, yeah, you know, you got to transfer it and, you know, he got to have confidence in himself. I'm, I call him my hub. Uh, he's the hub. We, we have our delay game and five out. Uh, we throw it to him and he, and I want have all the players to orbit around him. And he's the hub and he makes the decision. So he's essentially the point guard. So I want him to play like that and have a point guard mentality. That's watching more film. That's watching his players and what they do good and what they don't do good. And, and our cutting has been very, very good. And that's the one thing I wanted to stress, our high cutting off the top, um, off the 45 degree angle where they can't just load at the nail, getting those guys out of there. And then we're unlocking the empty elbows. And that's kind of what my offense is predicated around. Our offense is predicated around. Kevin, I have a non-basketball related question. I've noticed um, the kicks for you. Oh, okay. They're always oh, nice man. kicks, but today are, today today stands out. <laughs> Would you call yourself a sneaker head? And how do you think your sneaker collection ranks up to some of the guys? What is the name aside, sneakerhead. What is it? You, guys, you have Louis Vuitton on your feet oh, right okay. now, so I think <laughs> sneakerhead should be considered. Yeah, um, I like shoes. Um, uh, I start my outfits with the shoes first, so. That's what I always did. I got that from my mom. So she was pretty snazzy dresser. Uh, wears her soul up in heaven right now. But um, I just got it from her. So um, if I'm a sneakerhead, it's all right. But I got a couple back there. But I think Trevor Hendry got us all. Tre uh, Trevor on the, on the coaching side. He'd be having the dunks on and Nikes on. So you need to check his foot, footwork out too. Okay. So, yeah. What's the go-to kicks for you? Or do you have a favorite? I like boots, though, seriously. Yeah, I like boots a lot. But, um, yeah, yeah, you haven't seen that. Um, but I like boots, and um, I do like sneakers. Um, Travis Scott's are my, are my go-tos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just real quick, Kevin, do you believe that Cam Thomas deserves to be mentioned among the league's most improved players this year? Oh, I definitely do that. Um, you know, seeing his... His growth. I know he's been out with some injuries and, and stuff like that, but hopefully he can continue to have this stretch next 17 games. And what he did the other day, I think that was one of his best games. And not just the scoring, the rebounding, and we watching film in there. He's being back. He's touching guys. He's hitting guys. He's he's not running out the paint on the defensive end, talking. So it was amazing to see his growth um, since I got here. How he's retaining things that we want him to do. And 80% of basketball is not having the ball in your hand. So how can you impact the game, that 80% when the ball is not in your hand? And he's starting to do that. And once he starts doing that, I mean, I think that'll lock, unlock a lot of things where people are talking about him in the higher echelon of not just a score, but a complete basketball player.